welcome to today's webinar. My name is Skylar Cunningham of Lean Frontiers and I'll serve as your host today. Due to the short nature of our presentation, we will not be fielding questions. This session is being recorded and an email will be sent to you within a few hours with a link to the recording. So let me introduce today's presenter, Julie Simmons. Julie Simmons' deep passion is to develop others to help others develop their skills, capabilities, and confidence to solve complex challenges in their organizations using scientific thinking. As a 12-year CAUTA learner and practitioner, Julie now teaches and coaches others the routines of the improvement CAUTA and coaching CAUTA. With that, I will hand it over to Julie. Thank you, Skylar. Hey, everyone. I wanna give a huge thank you to Lean Frontiers for hosting this webinar and allowing me to share my thoughts on kata coaching. Lean Frontiers always supports me and I'm really grateful to them. Toyota Kata has been available for us to read for 11 years now. Our Kata community has grown so much in that time frame, and it's really exciting to hear how this global group is experimenting with the approach and developing new patterns. So today, I'd like to share with you the standard roles, practices, and tasks I use for a learner, first coach, and second coach. My intent is that even in a world of experimentation, we continue to see standard practices that stay true to the original body of work. So we maintain a solid footprint in scientific thinking, giving our organizations an ability to adapt at will to this ever-changing environment, while we focus on empowering people to stand firmly on the skills and capabilities they learn through practicing the improvement kata and the coaching kata. We'll start by defining the roles, practices, and tasks for our three players, the learner, first coach, and second coach. I'll spend time throughout discussing how the roles, practices, and tasks support personal development and growth, show some tools I find helpful, and end with a quick recap of the information. With all business improvement work, in, including the improvement kata and the coaching kata, Please remember, it's all about the people. I firmly believe the primary purpose of business improvement as a whole is to develop people. The improvement kata and the coaching kata provides the ideal place to teach, practice, and grow skills that develop people to be capable of handling huge challenges and achieving extraordinary results. Here's the pattern we're discussing today the framework we're operating within. The improvement kata pattern supported by the coaching kata pattern. The three players connected to these two patterns are the learner, first coach, and second coach. I believe there is a sub pattern the learner, first coach, and second coach follow around roles, practices, and tasks. A role is the part played that is a piece of the whole. Just like in this picture, when we're in a rowboat, we all have a part to play and each part is important. A practice is the act of rehearsing a behavior over and over to create standard methods that consistently achieve the desired performance while always looking for ways to improve. In this example, by now, we're all pretty good at brushing our teeth. We've mastered that technique. But even with this small task, do we think about improving our practice and method? It's an interesting question. Finally, a task is a piece of work to be done or undertaken, and we are all really good at tasks. Let's look at those three elements for each of our players within the improvement kata and the coaching kata, starting with the learner. What is the learner's role? What part do they play? Well, I see their role is to follow the patterns of the improvement kata and the coaching kata to learn through repeated practice, while over time developing scientific thinking skills and a mindset around how problems and challenges are tackled and achieved, while taking daily steps towards goals. 
Now that's a lot and it's a big part to play. But with the purpose of the improvement kata and the coaching kata in mind, which is to develop people's skills and capabilities while they're achieving extraordinary results, it's critical learners understand that role and their coach is laser focused on ensuring the learner is practicing correctly to help them achieve a scientific thinking and mindset and actions. As a reminder, a practice is the act of rehearsing a behavior over and over to create standard methods. For the learner, their practices are to play their role as discussed on the previous slide. Within the improvement kata, the learner plans for and takes daily steps to practice scientific thinking. They update their storyboard prior to their coaching session and they attend their daily coaching session to share their learnings. The learner's tasks are to follow their practices and while they are practicing to ensure they go and see, to develop skill of observation. While the learner is collecting and organizing data. And finally, it's essential the learner completes their task of communicating up, down, and across the organization. Let me now share with you the first coach's role, practices, and tasks as they teach, guide, and support their learner through the improvement kata. The role I want a first coach playing is. Well, they are the teacher. The first coach teaches the pattern of the improvement kata. In addition, this coach is also teaching specific skills needed for the learner to progress through the improvement kata while they're building their own analysis, problem solving, and scientific thinking skills. The first coach is responsible for assessing how the learner is progressing and growing in their skills and capabilities them move into coaching. As the learner and first coach work together, the first coach should always keep the overall challenge and target conditions in mind to help guide the learner as they're moving through the improvement kata. Remember, coach is responsible for the result. Finally, the first coach is the role of champion, cheerleader, celebrator, listener, and friend. This is empathy, something we all practice more, and is what I talk about in a previous webinar titled, What's Love to Do With It? To help the coach achieve their role, the practices I want the first coach following are to coach with purpose and with the learner's best interest in mind, to be 100% present. If you're with your learner in person, put your phone away. Point your feet towards the learner and look them in the eye. Be aware of your posture and your body language. If you're coaching remotely, which many of us are now doing as we are sheltered in place, remove all distractions, turn off the TV or music, set your stage for success by moving to a room where your kids aren't playing. Close your eyes as your learner speaks to really hear them and listen like you have listened before with big open ears. An element I practice to ensure I'm always thinking about the learner's growth is to have a target condition in mind for where the learner needs to be with their skill development. Prior to a coaching cycle, think about this target condition so it's fresh and at the forefront of my mind. Finally, the first coach needs to live their role as cheerleader, celebrator, and friend. The tasks for the first coach are to prepare for the coaching cycle by reviewing notes about the last coaching session and thinking about where and what the learner should be working on for their growth. They need to plan to show up on time to attend the daily coaching session at the learner's storyboard. The first coach needs to follow their standard coaching pattern. It may seem like a small thing to follow the same structure and pattern daily, but remember, the first coach is teaching in every conversation they're having, and the learner is learning from those conversations. The patterns the learner is learning here 
are the patterns they will take forward with them to think scientifically, to have a growth mindset for learning, to improve their organization as they are improving themselves, and to increase their own value. The first coach needs to be prepared to teach when necessary. This may happen on the fly, as identified during a coaching cycle. So if the first coach understands their role as teacher, as well as coach, they'll be prepared to teach when necessary. To keep track of the coaching cycle and how the learner is progressing, the first coach should have a notebook where they're documenting. The items I document are the current obstacle the learner's addressing, their next step, what they expect, and anything I might want to note on how the learner is growing or not growing in their skills and capabilities. A final task for the coach is to connect with engage how and where the learner is emotionally. Improvement work can be emotionally and physically draining, and it's part of the first coach's task to assess where their learner is and help them through rough spots. Now let's move on to discuss the second coach's role, practices, and tasks as they guide, teach, and support the first coach. The second coach's job is to grow the skills and capabilities of the first coach. The first coach can't see or tell when they're straying. So the second coach is there to help them stay within the corridor. The role I see the second coach playing is to walk along, maybe not literally, but be the mentor and guide that grows the first coach's capabilities, in teaching, communicating, their presence, how they show up and participate in the coaching session, and listening. With the first coach's best interest in mind, the second coach provides feedback, positive and corrective, to the first coach after the coaching sessions. If the second coach sees the first coach struggling, they can practice with the first coach. This is a great opportunity to connect with Tilo's dojo work and gives the first coach a safe environment to scenarios and get instant feedback from the second coach. Organizationally, the second coach also plays a role in assessing the growth of learners and first coaches to ensure everyone is progressing to the overall growth goals. The second coach practices are to keep the first coach's best interest in mind at all times, providing guidance and support to help the first coach grow in all of their skills to help them achieve a deeper understanding of the improvement tools, communication, listening, human development, etc. At every coaching session, the second coach has to be present and intently observe and listen to the first coach to find those gaps where practice and feedback are needed. Just like the first coach, the second coach should have a target condition in mind for the first coach's growth and development. Another practice for the second coach is to only present one, no more than two items for the first coach to work on. When we give feedback on multiple items, it's too much for the first coach to digest and it's just overwhelming. We are skill building here, so working on one skill at a time is best. Finally, the second coach is still a teacher and guide, so they need to be available to practice with the first coach. The tasks for the second coach are to support the first coach as necessary for their growth. Be with them with their best interest in mind to grow their skills. This means the second coach has to make themselves available to fully support the first coach. The second coach needs to prepare for their coaching session by reviewing their notes and, of course, attend the coaching sessions as planned. The second coach continues the task of documenting the coaching sessions and making notes about how the session went and what the first coach did well and where they have opportunities so they can give feedback. Here are a few tools I found helpful for the second coach. I've mentioned quite a few times how important it is to take notes and document elements of the coaching session. Most second coaches are supporting several first coaches, so we can use that document to remind ourselves the first coach is performing, what they're working on, and what skills the second coach is specifically working on with that first coach. 
I can't em emphasize enough that we are still skill building here. Practice, practice, practice is key. And either using Tilo's Dojo or creating your own scenarios as they pop up is a great way to practice to build those skills. Lastly, here's a chart called the Delgado chart created by Alex Delgado and Mark Rosenthal to assess how skill development was progressing in Alex's organization. Let's look at a larger version of that chart. I really like this chart. On the left side, the different challenges are noted, followed by identifying the learner and coach. They use three colors and three numbers where green number two means the activity is consistently being performed. Yellow number one means the activity is being worked on but isn't yet consistent. And red number zero means the activity is not being performed at all. The numbers allow for scoring and the colors help us immediately see gaps as well as achievement. The activities are the ones important to Alex's organization and what they were striving to achieve with their Kata deployment and learner and coach skill development goals. They chose activities like number of coaching sessions held within the last week. This helps them see target versus actual if the expectation is daily coaching sessions. Another activity is target condition is up to date and depicts gaps from the current condition. This activity is an indication the learner is consistently updating their storyboard to match what is actually happening and the documentation of the current condition versus the target condition is clear enough to see the gap. This chart is a great tool for the second coach to use when updating leadership on how the improvement work is going and keeps a focus on developing skills and capabilities throughout the organization. The Delgado chart is available for download from Mark Rosenthal's blog site, The Lean Thinker. You're free to go out and get it and morph it to meet your organization's needs. We've gone through a lot of information, so let's quickly recap. The learner plays the part of investigator, documenter, and communicator. They practice this role to develop a mindset around scientific thinking while they're building skills working on a real challenge. The first coach plays the part of teacher, mentor, guide, supporter, and friend to help the learner practice correctly so they do build skills and capabilities. And the second coach continues to play the part of teacher, mentor, guide, supporter and friend as they help the first coach build their overall coaching skills. To me, these roles all build into each other and overlap, which is why it's so important we're following standard routines and practices. I started this webinar stating all of the business improvement work we do that we invest our time in is for the development of people. When we focus on developing everyone's skills and capabilities, the results achieved are extraordinary. We believe every human needs to be challenged, needs to be creative, and needs to be valued. The work we're doing with Kata is to help people create, innovate, learn, and grow for their own benefit, as well as that of the organization. I'm really interested in and passionate about developing the scientific thinking skills and capabilities of learners and coaches. This work is really important to me. Thank you for listening to this webinar. I hope it gives you insight as you look at the roles, practices, and tasks of your Kata learners and coaches with the eyes of helping them be the best that they can be. If you have any questions and or want to discuss any of this in more detail, please reach out to me. Take care, everyone. Thanks for facilitating our session today, Julie. Just a reminder that today's session was recorded. You will receive an email shortly with a link to view the recording. Please share this throughout your organization. Thanks again, Julie, and thanks to everyone who participated in today's session. Have a great day. Thank <laughs> you.